Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. Welcome back to the Jesse Blake Sports Report. Whether it's your first time here, your last time here, or somewhere in between, I appreciate you and thank you for being here. All I want to talk about today is my hatred and the city of Toronto's hatred for the 2023 version of the Toronto Blue Jays. This It was such an eventful sports weekend with college football returning, an amazing Italian Grand Prix uh, this morning, Sunday morning. Team Canada, men's the men's basketball side, advanced to the Olympics for the first time since 2000. They'll be at the Olympics next year in Paris, the men's basketball team. They led by Shea Gilgis Alexander, and, and Dylan Brooks was out there screaming, Saga City. Like it was unbelievable start to the morning of watching them have a comeback victory uh, uh, versus Spain. It was it was incredible to watch, and the only thing that needs to be talked about today is Toronto Blue Jays. Like uh, unfortunately, the Blue Jays have just been such a gong show that they need to be discussed at length today, and that's what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna I'll even leave the CM Punk news. If you don't follow wrestling, uh, former WWE wrestler CM Punk, he's now over at AEW, and AEW just fired him, and it's been the most dramatic day of wrestling news or weekend of wrestling news uh, in quite a while. But all of that needs to be left on a pile somewhere else to be discussed and dissected some other day because the Toronto Blue Jays continue to make people hate them. They won today. Like I'm I'm saying all this after a win. They beat the Colorado Rockies today 7-5 in a rain-soaked game. Uh, There was an hour and a half delay in the middle of it, and the Blue Jays ended up winning the game in the top of the ninth inning and then closing it out with Jordan Jordan Romano in the bottom of the ninth. But it's a couple things from that game that I'll get to afterwards. But where, what, what that leaves us with is the bitter taste in our mouth still from Saturday where the Toronto Blue Jays blew a 5 nothing lead versus the Colorado Rockies. And if you don't know about the Colorado Rockies, they are currently last in the National League. They are dead last in terms of wins and losses, which is how we keep score in sports. The Colorado Rockies are last in that category in the National League. And the Jays lost to them on Saturday after being up 5 nothing, And that loss upset me I, I like I, I'm gonna say more than all the other losses, but I think just as much as all the other losses because it was every Blue Jays loss this season. Every loss has been the exact same in that teams don't beat the Toronto Blue Jays, the 2023 Toronto Blue Jays. They beat themselves. So the Blue Jays are up five nothing in this game, and I want to take you through some of the things that happen in this game that lead to them eventually losing the game. Uh, the final score was 8-7 to the Colorado Rockies. And and they, they put two up in the bottom of the ninth, or in the top of the ninth, and still wasn't enough to make the full comeback. But let, I want to just run down what happened to lead to an 8-7 loss to the worst team in the National, National League. And this loss is even more important because every single game, the Blue Jays have 26 games remaining, and every single game is do or die because they are trying to make the playoffs, and they currently sit one and a half games back of the Texas Rangers. The Texas Rangers, who lost on Saturday, won on Sunday, match the Blue Jays. So the Blue Jays on Saturday have the opportunity to gain that half game back. You know, get up a full game back on the Texas Rangers. They lose. Blue Jays win. They're right back in it. They're a half game back now. The Blue Jays are of that final wild card spot. And they don't do it. The Blue Jays don't close out a 5 nothing lead versus the Colorado Rockies. And here's what happened that led to them blowing this. Ernie Clement, who shouldn't be playing because of the injuries that the Blue Jays have been sustaining over the last week. I'll run through all those injuries. But Ernie Clement, two fielding errors lead to all of the unearned runs that were uh, were scored while Yusei Kikuchi was on the mound. They had four unearned runs from two fielding errors, which are entirely your fault. Um, one was a uh, Vladdy could have made a play to scoop it at first, but it was a bad throw. Did it to yourself. You say Kikuchi wasn't even his best self. He walked 
four batters in the in the game, which is just an expert like all the Toronto Blue Jays pitchers this weekend, they were just like, okay, how ma- how many people can we walk? Like, how many people can we walk and still try and win a win a baseball game? Like, we're gonna try and throw four balls to every single batter, and you know, if we get away with it, that'll be great. But otherwise, we're just playing this game to see how many people we can walk. You say Kikuchi four walks on the night. Uh, he threw a hundred pitches, fifty four were strikes, barely. Half of his a hundred pitches were strikes. How do you like? I get pitchers have off nights, but how do you expect to win any ball game? And John Schneider, who decides to just leave him out there for a hundred pitches when he doesn't have his stuff, that's where your manager steps in and says, "This guy doesn't have it tonight. We get it, hook him early." And just to add on to the walk fest that the Blue Jays decided to have on on Saturday night, you know, they threw walk fest in Colorado. And then Garcia comes in and has a chance to to just get one out. That's all you gotta do to end this disaster of an inning. And Garcia he says, I want one ticket. I want one ticket to walk fest because that's what the Blue Jays are throwing tonight. And he walks the first batter and the next batter comes up, gets a triple and three runs come in. There were, there were two out. There were two out at the time. You needed one out next two batters, a walk and a triple. And from there it was like, okay, the Blue Jays never muster enough offense to get back into this. And surprisingly they did. In the ninth inning, they get two runs, and they fall just short, and they lose 8-7. They lose 8-7 on a night where the Texas Rangers lost a game, and the Blue Jays could have climbed a game closer to the wild card. They lost a game to the worst team in the National League, and it felt like every Blue Jays game this season, where the team has a shot to do something really good and they fail. And I made a TikTok. Yes, I am on TikTok. Follow me on TikTok at jesse.blake. I think it's my TikTok handle. Um, I made this TikTok about, about the Blue Jays. I'll play it for you right now. And then I want to read some of the responses because I think, I think the majority of Blue Jays fans would agree with the sentiment here. Is anybody else just so down on the 2023 Toronto Blue Jays? I saw this tweet by Josh Goldberg the other day, and I can't agree with it more. There have been worse Blue Jays teams in the last 10 to 15 years, but can't say I've enjoyed watching a Blue Jays team less than this one. Don't get me wrong, I'm a giant Jays fan, always will be to the bitter end, but this year they just don't have that magic, and every chance they get to get a giant win or get a big hit and get some excitement, they fail. Are you feeling the Jays this year? I'm going to read some of the comments in response to the TikTok. So Darius says, despite them being over 500, I expect them to lose every game. Danny says, I cannot figure out how a whole team can forget to hit with runners in scoring position. It's baffling. Daryl says, it's so hard to watch a bunch of talented guys underperform so badly. Shits and Giggles 73 says, such a waste of seeing Kiermaier in a Jays uniform gives everything every play. Jabroni Mark says, not being clutch and no fun, really. And like, there's just so much more. I can just keep going. But that's the sentiment. It's, it's like the, the lack of clutch thing is so true. The runners in scoring position issue has been such a glaring issue with the team. And you, it's too late to solve any of that. You just cross your fingers and pray each time they get a runner on base nowadays. And there isn't a lot of hope on the horizon either. It's a lot of it is because of the high expectations set on these Toronto Blue Jays. They're a very good team on paper. Put together at the beginning of the year, the expectations on this squad were let's get into the playoffs. If we get there, we can do some damage. And the pitching held up. And the pitching is all there. Like it held up. And then, but the hitters and the approaches to the plate and the little things like fielding errors, like not being able to lay down sack bunts, like not cashing in when you got guys on base, 
these are the most frustrating aspects of of baseball of the entire game and the blue jays excel at all of those things at every point of baseball that makes you so frustrated the blue jays are good at it the blue jays are excellent at the little parts of the game that you should be able to get done the blue jays are excellent at not doing it and that's where it leaves us and it's only looking worse for the Jays. Matt Chapman, we're going to read off the list of injuries they're going through right now because they couldn't get it together in the middle of the summer, so they've tried to leave it to the end, and now injuries have caught up with them. Matt Chapman had swelling on his hand last week. He he's, was on the, the IL retroactive to August 28th, so he can't come back until late this week. He is still finding it difficult to make a fist. He has yet to throw or hit since suffering the injury to his middle finger. Bo Bichette has, according to Hazel May, he started running again today. Like, wow. We, uh, our best hitter is running. Awesome. Great news. Hopefully he's back mid-September. Like, Brandon Belt was removed from the lineup on Sunday. For, with lower back tightness. He came back uh, this series because he had back spasms, and now he's out again. Who knows how long? I don't have an update right now on how long Brandon Belt's going to be out, but disaster. And then Danny Jansen, one of the best parts of the lineup, is on the injured list with a fractured bone in the knuckle of his right middle finger. And Danny Jansen was like super hopeful about when he can come back and saying that hopefully he's back in time to be World Series MVP. Now, let's <laughs> let's let's hope that Jansen can come back a lot sooner than that. We we don't have an update on on when he'll be back, but oh boy. Chapman, Belt, Bouchette, Jansen out of the lineup and the Blue Jays on Sunday they they magically managed to pull off that victory on the back of Clement and and uh Mason McCoy and Spencer Spencer Horwitz thank goodness for those giant names and I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna talk about David Snyder because I feel like David Snyder has been so good and and who knows what the Jays would be without David Snyder and and like all, all, all praise to him, but if the Jays are relying on Davis Snyder to continue to be uh, Babe Ruth, prime Babe Ruth with that mustache, then they got a lot of problems for the month of September and chasing down that game and a half that they're back of the Texas Rangers. Now, one last word on Vladimir Guerrero Jr. One thing on Vladdy. Today, Vladdy had a home run and a double. Grounded into another double play, I believe, and he nobody in the history of Major League Baseball at his age has grounded into as many double plays as him. Uh, that's a that's a testament to how young he got into the majors. The list is kind of irrelevant, but it's kind of relevant. It's still a still a fact of his career. Vladdy 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 Junior. If you didn't see the game on Sunday, he hit a ball to the wall. He hit a ball off the wall and. When he hit that ball off the wall, he looked at it like it was a home run. He stared at it. He took a second and he jogged down to first like he had hit a ball over the wall. But it went off the wall and he was stuck on first with a single until the Rockies committed a throwing error, which allowed him to barely sneak into second for a double. Vladdy, at this point in the season, the way you've been hitting? Are you kidding me? With trying to pimp a home run that didn't go over the wall and barely getting to second when you should have just been walking in there because you hustled out a double. If Laddie's not on second base by pure luck, I would be even more livid. And I'm pretty livid because... 
John Schneider gave him a talking to on on the bench, and I think Vladdy Vladdy knows he he screwed up. I I was I want to say effed up, but I don't, I don't swear on this pod. Vladdy Vladdy screwed up. He screwed up hard today, and there's no punishment you can dole out, which makes it even worse because you can't punish this guy for just hot dogging it down to first base where you think you had a, a homer when you really had a, a, a double off the wall. It was inexcusable. And I hope that that type of attitude and that hustle, like that doesn't seep into other parts of this Blue Jays lineup or other parts of this game. And I hope we never see something like that again. That's a time you get to make that mistake once. You get one. Everybody gets one. It's that old family guy Spider-Man thing. Everybody gets one. Vladdy, that's your one. It's it's September. It's September 3rd. You are a game and a half back of the Texas Rangers who picked up their victory before you picked up yours, Vladdy. And you're sitting there in the middle innings watching a ball clang off the wall that you thought would be a home run and you're walking to first base when you should have been standing on second. That is inexcusable. I hope he learned his lesson forever. I get he's still young, but like he's been a pro for so long. I hope he learned his lesson forever and we never see that kind of hot dog attitude performance out of Vladdy ever again. He's too good for that. He's too good for the season he's had where the power has just seemed to evaporate. And oh boy, did that put a a little cherry on top of Vladdy's season. It was not great. And I hope the Blue Jays go out and they pick up a couple of victories in Oakland. That should be a sweep. Go out, sweep the Oakland A's. Hopefully Texas loses a couple games and they get into the wild card. <sighs> if they make it to the playoffs, it's going to be an adventure. I don't see them going deep, but I want to see them squeeze it out. I want to see this hated Blue Jays squad Tur- prove everybody wrong. That's what I'm asking from this Blue Jays squad. Prove all of us wrong. We don't believe in you right now. You don't get that trust. You haven't earned it at all. So go out there. Prove us all wrong. All of the doubters, all of the fans who have lost faith in this version of the Toronto Blue Jays, prove us wrong. That's what I'm hoping for. All right, now over to what's happening where I update you on what's happening on SDPN and you update me on on what's happening in your life for questions you might have via Twitter or Instagram DMs or our Discord. Join us on Discord at sdpn.ca. We have an SDPN Discord. This question, I asked for questions on Twitter actually today. And this question comes from Omar who says, who scores the first goal of the Leafs season? I'm going to take Willie. Willie Styles with a wrist shot. That's what that's what I'm going to say. A, a five on five. This is from Jonathan Angle. Why do people put ketchup on mac and cheese? Because it is delicious. That is the answer. I'm a big ketchup person on everything. Eggs, mac and cheese, put it on there. Matthew Madden says, when are the NHL streams returning? I'm going to try and do one final Arizona Coyotes GM season uh, stream before the start of the regular NHL season, um, before NHL 24 comes out. So within the month of September, I guess that would be. Uh, look out for that. That's on our Twitch channel. We have a Twitch channel, uh, twitch.tv slash SDPN Live. Follow us on Twitch there. Last question before we wrap up the, sh- wrap up the show. Right. Tech Yes says, can you do a regular JBSR on power rankings for hockey and football this year? The football... Hockey power rankings thing, like that's a good idea. Power rankings are always fun. Um, I think lots of NFL content needs to be funneled into this into this pod. I think I'll start with that on on Thursday, Friday morning, uh, with the kickoff happening on Thursday. Uh, I think we start some NFL content and maybe it's power rankings. I don't know weekly power rankings for the NFL. Like I feel like weekly power rankings are so. There's so much involved because it's all 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 32 teams, right? And you gotta you gotta justify each single position. Um, there's a lot involved in weekly power rankings, but it might be a fun task. Let's see. I don't know. I'll figure out the NFL content. 
but yeah, tons of it coming up uh, this NFL season, which kicks off on Thursday. I'm very excited for, for the NFL season. Good luck to everybody's fantasy team out there. That's it for me. That is it for us. I will see you next time. Thank you for being here. You could have been anywhere in the world which shows be listening or watching this right now. The Steve Dangle Podcast returns on Tuesday. Look out for a new episode Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday this week, and I'll be back Thursday night slash Friday morning for you on this feed. Thank you for being here. I already said that. Uh, like, subscribe, favorite, five-star it. That is it. Good night. And that from it's done. The Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. Jesse Blake, the guy that likes to hear his name twice in one sentence. Sure, I know him. No, he doesn't have an ego at all.